everyone. How are all of you doing today? I hope each and every one of you are having an amazing day. It is yours truly, Deshaun Hamlet, and for today's video, we are talking about my favorite Netflix show. So let's get into it. So first up, we got Sister Sister. Sister. So, oh my god, I love I love the theme song. Um, Sister Sister is a, is a sitcom that came out in 1994. Um, so basically, it's about T and Tamara. They're both twins who are separated by birth. And one day they meet each other at the mall. And it's like, oh my god, fate has brought us back together, you know? And now basically they're all just living together and, you know, life is just going by, basically. Um, it's one of those like feel-good shows. It's very it's very funny, you know, at at points. My favorite character is definitely Lisa Landry. Y'all, the mother makes me laugh. She's literally the funniest character in the show. I'll see you at the library. Ooh, and I got the cigarette. Huh? <laughs> cigarette. Huh? I just love her character. Like, it's just so amazing. She will literally make you laugh throughout the entire show. It's just good. I don't know. I don't know what else, what else to say about it. It's just a very, 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 very good show. Um, ooh, and this is Boy Roger. Oh my god, y'all, every single episode from like season one to season five. Go home, Roger! Go home, Roger! Like, it's kind of crazy, because like, throughout like, all the six seasons, you, like, you kind of like see them like grow up. That, that, that's, that's, that's the type of show that I actually like, you know, watching like these like child actors like growing up. For example, if you watched Degrassi, you see Drake. Or you know any other any of the other characters? I just said Drake because like everyone knows Drake was on the show. But you see like you know him turning into a teenager. You see Emma, Manny, you know Sean, all of them from from a kid, literally in like grade eight, nine, turning into it like a teenager, like they're in grade twelve, being like you know seventeen, eighteen. And it's like these kids grew up. These kids grew up. So the next show we have is The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Y'all, this show, this show is too much for me. This show is too good. Oh my god, so let, let's read the bio. She is half mortal, half witch, and you know, there's like dark forces and stuff like that, and like demons and all that. And yeah, like it's just one of those shows that's like, it's like, it's horror, but it's not horror. It's, it's scary sometimes, but it's, but it's not scary. Like, it's, it's not scary. But it's just one of those shows that are just like, you would expect it to be like so gruesome and so scary, right? But like, it's not. It's just very dramatic. Just like Riverdale. <laughs> um, yeah, it's crazy. I love, I love the show. Um, especially the main character, Sabrina. Also, Karen and Shifka, I think that's her name. Yeah. Um, my god, like, the, the show is just amazing. Especially the outfit, like I'm like I'm living I'm living for the outfit, y'all. I'm, li I'm living for the outfit. Like Sabrina's outfit is just like always, always there. Um, the show is just very de de definitely dark, but it's just that type of show that's like so, it's so good, you know. It's like you just can't you can't stop watching it. It's just so good, like you just have to continue to watch it. That's the type of show that is. You just, you just, you just, you can't stop watching. You just have to continue, um, because you always want, want, to, you always want to know what happens next. So let's talk about the next show, Grey's Anatomy. Oh, Y'all, I can't. The show, the show is so dramatic. It is, it gets on my nerves sometimes. Especially the characters, they get on my nerves sometimes. Um, so basically, it's about surgical interns and all that, basically going through life in an ER. You know, stuff happens. When, when they say stuff happens, I mean stuff happens in the ER and outside of work. <laughs> um, and it's just so, there's just so, so many parts that I'm just like, why are you being so stupid? I don't know. The, sh the show kind of like gets on my nerves, but at the same time, you can't stop watching it. So it's like, it gets on your nerves, but you can't stop watching it. It's a mix between both. The characters are dramatic. The characters are just an oh my god! Sometimes it's just annoying. I'm just like, why am I still watching this? Literally, I'm on season 16 on Netflix, and I'm, and I'm I'm asking myself, why am I still watching this show? 
this dramatic show that kind of irritates me a majority of the time, but I still watch it because it's interesting and there's a lot of dramatic things that go on in that show. Uh, so yeah, that's that show. I, I really love it. Next show, we got Kim's Convenience. Now, I don't know if you heard of, the, heard of this show, but it is good. It is great. It is more than great. It is fantastic. Um, so this show is just basically about um, a family that runs a convenience store and they just deal with everything, you know, so they're just living through life. Yeah, the father owns the store. I think it's the same as his, well, the, everyone calls him Appa, so Appa. Appa. Is, is that how you, say, is that how it's supposed to sound, Appa? Appa, Appa, I don't know. Oppa, Oma, Oma. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I love, I love those Korean, like, names. I don't know what you call it, Korean names, like, because Appa means father, Oma means mother, and then Oppa, I don't know, I think it means brother or whatever, something like that, like, you know, big brother, I don't, I don't know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna Korean, Korean, uh, I only know, annyeonghaseyo, or, yeah, that's just, that's just all. Anyways, Kim's Convenience is literally the greatest feel good show you will ever watch. About a family who owns a convenience store um, uh, in Toronto, where I live. That's why I love Toronto. It's based off of actually a real convenience store. I've actually never been there. And I, and I, I live in the city, so I don't know why I haven't been there yet. <laughs> and there's been like five seasons. So I don't know how I haven't been there. But one day I'll definitely go there. I think it's probably the most popular convenience store in Toronto because of the show. Appa is always the dramatic one. He's so dramatic. And Janet is just always, she, there's always something, there's always something Janet is going through. She's either arguing with her parents or she's just going through something. That's always dramatic. And then, um, then there's Jung, and then there's Shannon, and then there's Gerald and everyone else. The, the entire, the entire gang. Like, if you haven't watched it, it's a very good, it's like, so good. It's basically an adaption of, like, Toronto as, like, a multicultural type of city. Let's get on to the next show, Sense8. Now, I do not know how the show did not blow up. The show should have blown up. It's underrated. Um, so basically it's about eight strangers around the globe who find themselves connected, like, kind of connected like within the brain, like in a memory type of thing. Like they can actually communicate with each other via their mind. Like they actually go to where the other person is. Like let's say I'm in Paris, Paris and my friend is in Canada and we can like kind of connect like telepathically, but I can also be in their place at the same time as well. I don't know if that makes any sense. <laughs> but um, so they connect with, with one another through their thoughts and actions and it's just very psychological in a way. That's the type of show it is, like very scientific in a way. And the crazy thing is, is that like each of these characters, each of these eight strangers are from, yeah, like around the globe, as I mentioned. So we have one like who's from India, one from Africa, one who's from Europe, one who's from America, one who's from um, and America again, that's five, one is from Korea. Did I mention Korea? I don't know if I mentioned Korea, but I'm Korea. Um, one who's from Germany. And one more, one more. One who's from um, Mexico. I got them all. <gasps> Yay, I got them all. <laughs> oh my God. As I mentioned, all these people are from different type parts of the world. And one thing that kind of tri like, kind of triggered my, my mind is like, did they actually go to each part of the world to film? Like, I don't think they did, but like, there are some parts in the in the show where it's like, it looks like they're actually in like Korea or they're actually in Mexico. So sometimes I just think like, do are they filming, you know, in one place or are they going around the globe filming? Because if they're going around the world filming and, it's, and no one's talking about this show, then how in the world is, like, I don't understand. Like, this show is literally the best show. Y'all, this show will get you hooked. I watched it three times, and usually when I watch a show, I either, I watch it once if it's good. 
um, if I, if I watch it two times, then like, I love it. And if I watch it three, three times, then I'm, I'm obsessed with it. Um, so I'm definitely obsessed with this show. It's so good. Like, the show is just phenomenal. Um, whoever, whoever created the show, you're, you're, you're a beautiful human being who is amazing. <laughs> Alrighty, let's go on to the next show. So one day at a time. Y'all, one day at a time. I'm obsessed with this show. I've watched it over three. I watched it over three times. It's one of those shows that like, it's like kind of like based off of like real life, but it's not based on real life. But like, this could be like, you know, the way your family is based off of like, you know, like, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it, but like any family could be going through what they're going through in the show. But it's basically about a family that just, they're all going through a lot of experiences, they're going through a lot of pain. It's a, it's a very coming of age show and it's very, it gets very deep at times. It gets very emotional at times. It's, it's so good. So it's about like, um, it follows the life of Penelope, an uh, army veteran, uh, and her Cuban American family as they navigate the ups and downs of life. That's what the show is literally about. They're, them, all of them navigating the ups and downs of life. That's literally the basis of the show. You don't, you don't understand how good the show is. Let's go on to the next, to the next show. Next show, Itaewon Class. Itaewon Class. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, I, no, I think that's how you pronounce it. That's what, that's what I meant. This show broke barriers. This show is like not your average Korean drama. And if you never watched Korean drama, here's a simplified version. Basically, every single drama is basically a love triangle. This guy likes this girl, but this girl likes this guy. So, you know, it's love triangle. Um, that's it's mostly, you know, the basis of it. There's usually drama and romance. Those are like the two two categories in a, in a usual Korean drama. But this one's just drama. Not really much romance. Um, but there's still a love triangle, like, within, like, the show. Um, if you like deep in the show, it's like kind of like a real, real, real life love triangle. Um, but even uh, forget forget the love triangle, but like it's just about like I don't know. They broke barriers with this show. I mean, we have a black guy in a Korean drama that does that that did so well, like the drama did so well, and it, it gained popularity. And now I'm pretty sure this black guy is probably probably popular in Korea. In South Korea, like, cause I'm just like, wow, okay. I never watched a drama that had a black person in it. Let me let me watch it. And we also have a transgender um in the show as well, which I think is amazing. Like, I mean, that's breaking various barriers as well. Um, so yeah, it's also a feel good show as well. It's a very, it's a definitely a feel good show, and it's all about like being your best self. As I always say in my, my videos, at the end of my video, I always say be your best self. And this is literally the basis of that show. Like, you know, be your best self. Do what you gotta do. Um, you know, face those challenges, persevere, be the better person. That's literally what this show is all about. And I, I really hope y'all like it if you ever decide to watch it because this show is literally so good. Let's go on to the next show. So next show, Money Heist. I am sure you heard of the show. Um, and if you haven't, you've probably been living under a rock. Um, so a criminal master mastermind who goes by, goes by the professor um, has a plan to float the biggest heist in record history to print billions of euros in the Royal Mint of Spain. And he recruits eight people with certain abilities who have nothing to lose. And yeah, like it's just the group takes thieves the group of thieves take hostages to aid in their negotiation with the authorities, um, who strategize to come up with a way to capture the professor. This show is so good. Literally, I'm just like, cause in the first episode, there's, there's already drama going on. And that's why like, when a show just goes straight into the action, that's, that's what I love. And this show did that throughout the entire two seasons. <laughs> throughout the entire two seasons, it did that. I love these types of shows. Like, if you, if you like, um, if you like Lupin, if you like Lupin, is it, is it called Lupin or Lupe? Lupe? Lupin? I don't know how you pronounce Lupin. It's that, that French show. 
that <laughs> that French show. If you liked watching that French show, Lupi, Lupe, I don't know how to pronounce it, but whatever it is, you will love Money Heist. You will love Money Heist. Period. If you haven't watched it, go get some popcorn. Skip this video. Watch Money Heist right now. Okay, that was scary. Watch Money Heist right now. <laughs> Next show is How to Get Away with Murder. Do I need to explain to y'all why you need to watch it? Viola Davis is in it. That is an explanation enough. You don't need anything else. Just, just the fact that Viola Davis is in it, that's all you need. Um, basically, it's about how to get, the title. How to, get, how to Get Away with Murder. Annalise Keating, a criminal defense lawyer and a professor, uh, teaches a group of aspiring law students and then, however, their lives alter when they get entangled in an aberrant, aberrant murder. An aberrant murder. Well, well, well. Um, you, you wouldn't want to be that person, right? Um, the entire show is just amazing. It's so good. There's a lot of drama. Um, it's definitely like crime type of drama type of type of show. I can't explain how good this show is. You have to watch it for yourself. Um, this show is like, I can't really explain it. You just have to watch it for yourself in order to like kind of understand the show. Annalise Keating, amazing lawyer. Viola Davis, amazing actress. Um, this show is just beautiful. So yeah. I don't know what else to say about it. It's just an amazing show. Watch it for yourself. And the last show, Queer Eye. Oh my God, y'all. So this show um, is about like five gay guys um, who basically go to people's homes and kind of like change their lives for the better. Um, like they do so much. Uh, it's like, you know, no, like for example, each um, guy, each queer eye guy has their own like thing that they're, has their own like topic. For example, Anthony does cooking, Jonathan does hair and grooming. Um, Karamo does culture, so culture is basically just talking to people, letting them know that, you know, how you can break your wall down. Um, Tan, who does fashion, I love fashion, um, and Bobby, who does cooking. But it's not even about all of that. It's about, like, building a relationship with the people around you. Being your better self. Um, that's what the show is all about, being your better self. It's one of those emotional, emotional shows. Every episode will make you emotional. Well, maybe, maybe almost every episode will make you emotional. There's been a lot of things that's happened. Um, you know, people have changed for the better. Um, the show is definitely, a, it goes above and beyond expectations. So that's what I love about this show. It goes above and beyond expectations. They're always helping other people out to be their better selves. They're just amazing five, five amazing guys who change your lives for the better. Um, they're called the Fab Five. <laughs> they're called the Fab Five. Amazing show. So yeah, like they are just all great people who really impact, put an impact on your lives for the better. They help you change your ways. They help you to be the best person you can be. They help you to do, you know, do your best. And yeah, like, it's just amazing. So that's that show. And yeah, that was my last show, I think, yeah. So I really hope y'all enjoyed this video today. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. And also, if you like, if you like to subscribe, I would also appreciate that as well. And as always, be your best self, stay motivated, be happy, and I will see you in the next video, and also, stay safe.